Hello, this week we are looking at Roman historiography and in particular two historians who if you study Roman history or particularly the Julio Claudians you will be very familiar with. They are Tacitus and Suetonius. So a quick recap of what we've done in terms of Greek history we looked or historiography we looked at how the Greeks went from Homeric epics where a lot of credence was given to um, gods and goddesses into historians such as Herodotus, Thucydides and the likes uh, which were a lot more credible. They went and spoke to eyewitnesses and verified um, the events that they're writing about through men. So as we know the Romans were very influenced by Greek culture, they always put their own spin on it. Um, Roman historiography is no different, it definitely follows in the footsteps of Greek historiography. Roman historiography stretches back to at least the 3rd century BCE and was influenced by Greek historians like Herodotus and Thucydides. There are main, two main types of Roman historiography and that is annals and monographs. Annals um, or annalists weren't quite historians in the sense that we think about historians now. They were recording events in order year by year for the purpose of record keeping. They didn't add any criticality or judgment. They had no personal voice in what they were writing about. It was simply just listing information chronologically um, so that there was a record of what had happened. Monographs, on the other hand, are a little bit more similar to what we would recognize as history today. Um, these histories were thematic and they focused around usually one particular topic um, and it is within the monographic category that we start to see the development of biographies. Um, so that is the lives of important men in the Roman world. So we start to see these histories um, arise where it is written by men, for men, about men and it is about those very important figures in society and this is something that um, sticks around in historiography for quite a while so this is a trend being set that we see um, throughout the next phases of historiography. So let's begin with Tacitus. Tacitus was a Roman historian and politician. He was born to the provincial um, equestrian class so he was quite well off, quite um, what would you say, privileged. He had pessimistic insights into the psychology of power politics and blended straightforward descriptions of events, moral lessons and tightly focused dramatic accounts. Tacitus made use of the official sources of the Roman state and it is here with Tacitus that we see another um, step in the progression of use of sources. So now we've gone from word of mouth to very heavily critiqued word of mouth um, to now people like Tacitus who are using formal records that they have access to because they are part of this privileged class. Um, he writes from a non-partisan perspective and this essentially just means that he was not biased particularly towards any um, political group. However, he was still very nostalgic about the virtues of Republican Rome and he really despised how it had fallen to the dictates of the power of an emperor. He was against how the Senate had become sycophantic, powerless and corrupt over time and all of that is very clear in his writing. Instead of writing a narrative, as historians like Polybius may have done, Tacitus focuses on the character of the various emperors, leading us towards a more biographical historiography. And then that leads us very nicely into Suetonius. Um, the biographical form of history is even more prevalent in the works of Suetonius. He was a Roman historian born around the end of the Julio-Claudian era and he held administrative positions at the imperial court. Suetonius was a close friend um, of senator and letter writer Pliny the Younger. Pliny the Younger described him as being quiet and studious, a man dedicated to writing. In the second century, Suetonius wrote the Twelve Caesars, which was a set of 12 biographies of Julius Caesar and the first 11 emperors of the Roman Empire. His writing has been described as a bit spicy, a bit juicy, um, scandalous, it included gossip drama, it sometimes included humour. 
um, the work relies on rumor quite heavily which has led to Suetonius being critiqued by other historians and he was also very personal in expressing his opinion on the matters that he was writing about and the individuals that he was writing about. He was very free with his personal opinions. The tales of the Emperor's sexual habits constitute some of the most famous passages that survive from Suetonius. He chronicles Tiberius's vile behaviour on Capri, detailing how he forced men and women to engage in threesomes, had children perform oral sex on him, and raped young men who happened to take his fancy. Um, Suetonius's biography is kind of in a sense cut the emperors down to size. It revealed them as human men with very real flaws and it presented emperors as not gods but men who can be critiqued and should be critiqued um, and we really see that criticism of important figures develop in the work of Suetonius. We also, with Suetonius, see a return to a more entertaining version of history, um, one that people might read to find a little bit of humour, to find something interesting, something like a talking point, um, and also just history that can be read to enjoy oneself and escape the realities of everyday life. And so what have we seen, what developments are we seeing with this progression from Greek historiography into Roman, well we're seeing some development in terms of the sources that are being used, so rather than interviewing people who were there at the time, we're starting to see state records being used, we see that annals are very important, these records that are being kept by the Senate and by the state. Um, lots of reading is now being required in the study of history rather than just listening and writing. It's a lot of reading, a lot of sorting through we also see a lot of the personal voice of the historian coming through. Um, we also see historians starting to really question each other and their integrity as they get a little bit too sucked into the entertainment. And of course, we see a little bit of a return to the more interesting and entertaining aspects of history. It's no longer very dry um, and no longer just, you know, chronicling what's happened in the past. It is interesting it's kind of you know Suetonius's writing is almost essentially like keeping up with the Kardashians um, but for these Roman empires emperors so we start to see that return to history as being something more than just kind of dry fact um, we start to see a little bit more of the humor coming back and a little bit more of the entertainment without making it into a narrative um, so yes, that is a brief recap of Roman historiography. Next week we're going to lead into Christian historiography um, and looking at some individuals such as the Venerable Me um, Bede. And yeah, it's going to be a good time looking at Christian historiography and then the journey continues from there.